Hades 16. Let the dead bury the dead, Jesus said. Is it better to take care of the living? Let the dead bury the dead, says Jesus. Isn't it worth taking care of the living first and foremost? This is often the objection found among Protestants. Because the Protestants, I would say myself as Catholic, their error is to give the same value to the texts of the Old Testament as to the texts of the New Testament. They are Bible specialists. Apart from the Old Testament, what do we say about the dead? Let them sleep. They are in sleep at the beginning of the Bible. Sheol is a place of shadows where there are no more memories. In fact, little by little, throughout biblical history, the various depths of the other world have been revealed at the end of the Old Testament in the books written in Greek, which unfortunately they did not keep. It is well told that the next world, there is not only Shia, therefore, between this world and the next, but that some truly enter a provisional paradise, which Jesus calls Abraham's bosom, where they are alive, they are awaiting for the coming of Christ. While others are in purgatory, this is told verbatim in the second book of Maccabees, chapter 12, warriors who had died in the war because they wore idols around their necks and kind of idol to protect themselves and indeed Judas Maccabee offered sacrifices in the temple of Jerusalem so that their souls will be forgiven of this sin of idolatry and that one day they enter paradise that means that there was thus a purification and the Jews knew of it obviously Jesus fully assumes what he said this is the parable of Lazarus and the rich man where the rich man who died is obviously not in hell in the hell of the damn it he is a man full of kindness who thinks of his brothers who would like the grace and join poor Lazarus that he regrets what he had done while on earth Pope Benedict 16 in his encyclical Special V44 shows that it is undoubtedly this text which influenced the church to reflect more and more upon this purgatory. And then there is eternal hell already known in the Old Testament. What does it mean? It is confirmed by Jesus the dead are alive, the dead are not shadows in the tombs. And to prove it, Jesus, on the day of his transfiguration, allows Elijah and Moses to appear before him while he speaks with them and then to prove it yet again as if we don't believe it enough on the day of his death he said to the good thief today you will be with me in paradise heaven jesus says is the place of the living god is not the god of the dead he is the god of abraham isaac and jacob and so from the beginning of the church of the churches founded by the apostles the certainty that that the dead were always alive, really alive, and that those who were in paradise could take care of us effectively since Jesus established them over many. Anything that can be asked for, he does it right now. So if they are alive, then it is because there is not an infinite distance between us and them, and that those who have not completed their purification, well, it is always possible to pray for them this is what we have always believed it and therefore from the beginning there were prayers for the dead but we also pray it we confided in the saints who were in heaven so that the dead who were still in the death's passage to purgatory will go quickly to paradise and so that those who are in paradise no longer needing our prayers may in turn help us from the very beginning of the church in the apostles creed it was committed into the faith we believe in the communion of saints and not only the saints on earth but also the saints in heaven so that really as they arrive in heaven we have a church that takes care of us and of our salvation at the hour of our death 
Christ will not return alone, but he will be accompanied by the clouds of heavens, angels and saints. At the hour of our death, we will see them, we will see our mother again, our father, if they are dead, and that will be the meeting, this time effective face-to-face -face of the communion of saints.